Yeah, it works. Uh, no, we have to say this to Keith constantly. Yeah. All right. Uh, hello. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Jonathan. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, hello. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks to Plug for having me here. Uh, thank you all for coming. I'm really, really grateful that you were able to uh, make it out tonight. Um, and sort of hear me rant and ramble a little bit, so that should be cool. Um, I'm a computer scientist. I really love computers, like probably most of you, you know, eat, breathe, sleep. Um, computers. My wife's like, why are you thinking about Lisp macros at 3 in the morning? And I'm like, sweetie, I can't sleep. Um, what so, which, exactly, yeah. right. Like, what do you do at 3 o'clock in the morning? Um, you know, so, so that's cool. And sort of concurrency is sort of an interesting area um, because distributed systems, as I'll get to later, um, that's sort of something that, that keeps me occupied. Um, I'm a principal technologist at Cigna, so I'm not right here representing the company. I didn't wear the shirt or I didn't bring any swag to give out, but um, you know, if any of you are interested in some of the stuff that Cigna's doing, um, there are many facets to working at Cigna. Um, they sponsor my research and are very, very good to us. Um, so for those of you who are interested, please come find me after, uh, sort of in informally. Um, all right, so how many of you are on IRC? Yay! Okay, so the rest of you, if you don't have your hand up, you should come hang out with us on IRC because it is terrific. Um, we have a wonderful, self-selecting group of total, total nerds. You know, we have a lot of fun, and it's always a great place to sort of get a second opinion on stuff. Um, you know, Walt, for example, was kind enough. Walt, say I, I will. So, you know, Walt was kind enough to, to look over my slides because I'm a new dad, so if they're terrible, it's his fault. Um, but anyway, so, so yeah, so, so um, I'm young to turn on, on IRC. And a little bit, so I started out in Philadelphia, actually. Then I went to school in Washington. Um, I lived in Connecticut while my wife was in law school, got involved in the startup community there, moved to New York City, continued in the startup community, and then joined Cigna after I was sufficiently traumatized by the startup world. Um, so went corporate, and I'm really happy, been, been happy ever since. And then I came back to Philadelphia, where I belong. Hello, my pretties. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm really happy to be, I, I live in Jenkintown now, so for those of you who are, who are interested. Um, okay, so I started, when I started at Cigna, I was on the big data team. How many of you are like me and are sick of hearing the term big data thrown around everywhere? Okay, yeah. all right, I'm a good company. <laughs> Let's do it again. It's such a buzzword, right? So um, I think that this is sort of the perception, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you have big data, you just kind of like sprinkle it in, and all of a sudden everything's fantastic, right? Um, the reality is, is that you spend a lot of time processing and cleaning data and sort of working with CSV files, which is, which is why I, I got here. Um, you know, but, but the truth is, is that I was never a big data guy. Um, you know, I sort of ended up on the big data team, uh, did some cool work there for like two years, really enjoyed myself. Um, and now I'm back sort of to my core, my core roots, which are distributed systems and operating systems and programming languages and stuff like that. Um, so, so, so the question I started to ask myself is sort of when do you bring in the heavy stuff? Because it got to the point where like even the most simple tasks became a MapReduce job, right? Because when all you have is a hammer, everything's, be a nail. Nail. everything's a nail, right? So when all you have when all you have is MapReduce and Spark and you have the whole Hadoop ecosystem, like all of a sudden the elephant Whoa, gets too you. many buzzwords all at once. Right. <laughs> just, down. Everyone just, just chill, bingo, right? bingo, bingo, bingo. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Man management somewhere is just like <laughs> so. The synergy. <laughs> so you understand where I'm coming from. So so uh, you know. So I started to ask this question: At what point do you bring in the heavy stuff, right? Um, and I I found this paper. Um, have any of you read this paper, Scalability, but at what cost? It was on the morning paper, um, a, like a year or two ago, and it blew my mind, I read it like four or five times, and they introduced this, this term, cost, configuration of performing a single thread, right? So at what point does the overhead introduced by sort of scaling out, even though it's wonderfully scalable, right? The, when, when do you start, of, when do you catch up with that overhead and actually get performance gains, right? So I can make this hypothesis, right? I can say that a concurrent multi-threaded approach to CSV processing will yield better performance and efficiency, than a synchronous single threaded attempt. Okay, so that's my hypothesis. So I'm going to see if I can go ahead and tackle this guy. So I used Ruby um, to generate fake data and to uh, template out a bunch of the awk code because I wasn't about to sit there and hand tool a bunch of awk. Um, love it, but not that much. Um, Scala, interesting stuff for processing data, right? I um, used Rust, which was really cool for some native benchmarking, and then I, I did do awk 
um, just just for fun, which we're gonna get back to. We're gonna that's how we're gonna kind of gonna come full circle. So any any questions about like where I'm coming from with this? Yes. Uh, silly question. Have you ever tried to do native benchmarking with uh, Ruby at all, just for fun? I I I could. Um, I opted not to because of memory okay. cons constraints. Memory, memory constraints. I opted not to because of memory concerns. <laughs> let's be honest, right? Mm -hmm. So I was a Rails developer and paid the bills for like four four years or something, or five years or something. So no, I was just so kind yeah. of wondering because, like, to me, out of that list, it would be an excellent worst case scenario. So, 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 Awk is actually pretty performant, and is uh, so I'm impressed that you would pick Ruby out of that list. Um, so, yeah, so, so there's some there, there's some interesting options, right? But you yeah. could only do a single threaded approach because it has the gill, right? It has the uh, the global interpreter lock. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is not the enemy. It just yeah. Anyway, why Scala? Um, I'm sorry. Why Scala? Why Scala? It parallelizes. I'm going to talk about it. Okay. I'm going to talk about it. G great, great question. I mean, I happen to love Scala. I'm a big fan of Wojtarski's uh, work. Um, I understand that it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, um, and you know. But if I was going to go with a statically typed language that I needed the characteristics of sort of this for, um, I, I would, I would, I certainly would look at Java, right? I would, I would definitely look at Scala. The JVM is pretty interesting, right? So, did that answer your? Yes, absolutely. Uh, any other questions about where I'm coming from with this? We can be interactive. I have candy. I'll throw candy at you if you ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two for two, nice. Yeah, so, you know, yes, that's the best the nerd has ever thrown in this, this particular group. Uh, so, yeah, so, so, sorry, I just, I break things. So, um, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm, uh, all right. Um, okay, so this is the actual work done, right? So if I took a three column CSV, right? with text fields, I would add an X onto the front of each column and an X onto the back of each column. So it's basically string concatenation. Now why string concatenation, right? Um, moves a bunch of stuff around the memory most of the time, right? But also the CPU can sometimes optimize moving things around um, in interesting cases. So without, we can get into why the CPU does that with someone who knows more about how like O3 processors and stuff work. Um, and that would be a great talk in and of itself. So we qualify to do that. Yeah, like right, like 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 if you're if you're qualified to do a talk on branch prediction and so on and so forth, like that would be that would be a great talk. Um, do we want to? So 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 how large a CSV file am I testing with, right? Mm -hmm. So it's about five million rows, uh, exactly five million rows with a header um, and a hundred columns wide. Okay, so it's a it's a good sized. Uh, it's about a gigabyte of data. Um, you know, not too much that you can't fit it in memory. Um, but also not so little that you know it, it, it executes quickly and you don't give like the JVM's JIT time to warm up and all interesting stuff. Well, it's up in Vim real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm actually an Emacs guy, and a large file mode just kicked me in the teeth the other day <laughs> trying to trying to do one of these. So uh, yeah, so 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 just for fun, um, awk. I use BSD awk that's on the Quackintosh that I use, um, and that was cool. My laptop turned into a space heater. <laughs> um, so it used quite a lot of time, it took a lot of wall clock. Wait, does this? Yes! <laughs> look at that! Yeah, you look at that? I got the, the laser pointer. So, so it took about, it took about four, four to third minutes of, uh, of wall clock time versus Gawk using, using actually GNU Awk with the same code. Um, took about a minute and 46 of, 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 uh, of time. And if you look at sort of the, the CPU time that's, uh, that's there. I hope I calculated everything right. And you can see uh, that that was sort of an interesting thing. Um, so that's so that's one way to skin the cat, right? One way to skin the cat is just to use awk. It's not really CSV processing. It's kind of just a way to get this work done. Okay. So time for the substance. Now that we've looked at the awk and stuff like that, um, Scala. So someone asked me, who are you? Peter. 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 What? Corman. Peter Corman. Where do From you work? From Town. Oh, cool. Wait, where? Big but Evan. No kidding. I, uh, I live right at the corner. Right down here in the Club. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, uh, I live at the corner of Forest and uh, Chicken Town Ave. So, yeah, cool. All right. Anyway, um, so 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 Peter asked sort of like I guess what's the sixty-four dollar question, which is why Scala, right? Um, so it, Scala, Scala is compiled to JVM bytecode, right? Therefore, it's managed memory because it has JVM's garbage collection. It also has the JVM's JIT. For those of you who haven't like made a study of the JVM. I personally believe it's um, one of the seven wonders of the software world, just in terms of the way that different pieces come together, right? Like there are there are web browsers, modern web browsers that can do less 
that the JVM can do. Um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'll sort of leave the value judgment up to you. Um, you know, but it's also functional um, and object-oriented. And one of Martin Undersky, when he created Scala after a couple different failures in the Java world and learning from those experiences, which he did remarkably well and should be a lesson to all of us, he sort of created Scala and did a really good job, in my opinion, of exposing the notion that functional and object-oriented computing, um, programming paradigms, rather, are sort of two sides of the same coin. So we can totally get into that holy war later, um, but you, you, can do, you can do a little bit of each, and that's sort of the reason that I picked Scala. So Peter, does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. All right. You want, yeah, I, I just started studying. That's why. I, uh, well, I, so I think it's terrific. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really terrific. My friend, actually, um, Walt and I have a mutual friend, Brian Mitchell, who works at Sigma, and Dr. Mitchell um, teaches uh, graduate software engineering. He's an adjunct at Drexel, and he redid all of his all of his stuff. In, all of his assignments are now Scala. Um, I think he might now move away from Scala toward Go, but we can. Have <laughs> our, uh, <small laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So, so single-threaded Scala, right? Single thread Scala looks looks like this, right? So the JIT is pretty good, right? It gets gets warmed up. It's pretty nice. Uses uh, you know a good amount of, uh, of of CPU time, but not not a crazy amount. Um, notice the breakdown between user and system CPU time there, um, and the wall clock time is just under two minutes, right? One fifty two. Slower. I okay, I see this. What yeah. Do do this is slower than it's slower than Gawk. Right, Gawk was mm -hmm. one forty two, wasn't it? One forty nine. It was well. Of course. We're getting there. So, so can I also ask, like, how, like, how, it's, so it's, it's only a few lines of, of awk to do this. Correct. So it's probably not much longer in, in Scala, right? Aha! So, when I do, when I do the, the real programming languages, right, because awk is, like, fake, right, or something like that. Uh, so, so, so when I do the real programming languages, I'm actually doing, um, splitting and traversals, and one of the things that I, and I'm going to show you this code, one of the things that I did not do intentionally, um, was I intentionally did not use any CSV library. I'm loading every line into memory, or as I load every line, I'm splitting them on the commas, I'm traversing to add X's one way, I'm traversing to add X's the other way, and then I'm going to um, join them together in columns and write them out, okay? So you're making two passes? Or... Actually, strictly speaking, I'm making four passes, right? So I'm, I'm splitting, which means you have to go through it all right, at once. So, you split, so you, I have split. That's one. Axis to the, the front. Axis to the front. Two. Well, so so the optimizing compiler might, right? So there are compilers which are smart enough to optimize that away, right? To make it to make the two passes one pass, mm -hmm. right? To, and maybe even in, with some inline. There's some interesting stuff that can happen underneath the hood. I have not disassembled any of this to see what's actually happening. I admit. Okay. Um, however, so 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 we got the splitting. We got the X's on the front, we got the X's on the back, and then we got the joining. Okay? We're cool? Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, so awk, awk doesn't actually simulate the work that we did, right? So awk was for fun because it doesn't actually do a good job of simulating work. It's just a way to get the, the job done. So I, I did I almost didn't include awk, but I, I could not when you get to the end. But awk's doing one. all that work. It's doing the splitting, and it's Doing all those things, so. So I'm glad I included. I, I still don't see where the second pass is coming from. Like, it, like if I were to do this in Perl, I would, or even in C++, I would do, I don't know, like an S printf or something like that. And it's only there's no way for it to optimize that out. Yes. Two passes, so. um, if you if you're doing it with with uh, uh, can't you just replace the commas with x comma x? Yeah, that's basically what I do. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, I oh, so that's one way yeah, to skin a cat. Way to do it too. Right. So, 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 so I'm basically. Uh, oh, so, uh, sorry. No, I'm actually. Wait. Oh, oh, wait. I'm actually grabbing every column. Sorry. It wouldn't take into account the last column. Whoops. Right. So you would need to. So, so I, so I tried it that way. The way that I settled on was I actually had Ruby generate the awk, which indexes every column. Oh, I see. Which so. grabs it. But yeah, you could do it. You could do it like with yeah, 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 string. That way, but that's like if you're trying to simulate what you do in the real world. That in in the real world, you'd be doing something more complicated than this anyway. So, Agreed. So it's kind of yeah, you'd have to have escape kind of commas changed. because you know there'd be commas in your data and uh, all those other stuff to deal with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, X, the X comma X is just simulating you're adding some stuff. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You can't assume yeah. that it would be the same. Correct. Cool. No, no, don't be don't don't be apologetic. <coughs> this is the reason I'm here. If I if I wanted, I wouldn't have put this on GitHub if I wasn't interested in what people think. Right? Um, so yeah, so 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 I sort of so I sort of then started to ask the question, you know, is parallelism worth it, right? 
Um, I think that there is parallel gawk somewhere in the world, but I, I wasn't gonna do that guy, right? It wasn't that much fun. Yeah, I, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna do that. Um, you know, so so then so that was like great. You know, I'm I'm getting ready. I'm gonna do parallelism. It's gonna be terrific. Um, and then I remembered. Hold on a moment. I'm Minutin Bitta. I was like, threads are terrible. How many of you have ever worked with threads? Okay. Um, how many of you were like, I want to do that all day long because it's great and threads are a good metaphor for concurrency? I'm a masochist. Okay, masochist. All right, yes. so one. One yeah. guy. <laughs> I'm kidding. We already got one. But Walt gets one. <laughs> and then you. Who, what's your name? Jay. Jay. All right. Jay gets one, too. Okay. I'm going to run out of candy at this rate, guys. <laughs> There's a whole There's bag a whole right there. There's a whole bowl right you know, there. You know, normally I bring string cheese, because everyone loves string cheese. So. Oh, nice. But uh, I'm new dad, so I don't have time to get it. You can split it if, if they were mod sticks, though, <laughs> <Not God>. gone. <laughs> okay, so, so, so threads are really terrible, okay? So I think that threads are a terrible metaphor for concurrency. I didn't personally want to get started with so much threading, so I did everything in my power to avoid threading. Now, what other models of concurrency are there other than threading? Q. Call them out. Producer consumer. Producer consumer. Okay, so but you can have, you can do that with threads, right? So that's more of a general pattern. Mm -hmm. multiple, pro multiple processes. Multiple pro multiple processes, right? So so you can you can sort of you can fold work <coughs> multiple processes and have shared nothing architectures, right? What's another name for a, what's another shared nothing architecture? Well, there's the that produce is another way. Right, so 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 so, so my produce is, is is one way to do that. Great. What else? But go old school. You use more than one computer. Yeah, <laughs> that's not that's not old school. That's terrific, right? That's my friend. That's why, that's why I have a job, right? Um, but you know, I'm thinking other things. Um, how many of you remember Ada and tasks with task parallelism? Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, I didn't pick that one. The way that I picked are actors, um, because actors are pretty good, and I generally find that. Um, the actor model is a very natural, in my opinion, very natural way of modeling concurrent computation. So let's go over actors. How many of you are familiar with actors? Just, just give me like a thumbs up. I mean, okay, no one. Wow. All right. So here we go. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So in the in the actor model, it was invented in the '70s by a guy named Carl Hewitt. Okay. And Carl Hewitt's really smart dude. And Carl Hewitt um, basically came up with this idea that actors are primitive. Fundam they are the primitive and the fundamental unit of computation in the actor model, okay? So, so, so actors need to have three abilities. They need to have processing, storage, and communication. Or as I like to put it, they need the ability to do things, remember things, and talk to one another, okay? So it's a very, uh, I don't want to say general, I'm going to say abstract, right? It's a very abstract, widely applicable model of modeling concurrency. Actors have addresses. You can't send a message to an actor whose address you do not have, right? Which makes them, uh, addresses are very precious commodities, right? Um, addresses are kind of like capabilities. They're different from identity. Um, so we can get into that sort of computer science e part of it. Um, mm -hmm. And the actor axioms are threefold, right? So what can an actor do when it receives a message? Okay, so it can do, it can do three things. The, the, these are the axioms. Right? The axioms are create more actors. Okay? So an actor is always free to spawn more actors locally. Okay? Um, which, with, with which it can then communicate, bringing us to actor number two, axiom number two, which is send messages, which requires the actor address, which is what makes it a little bit like, like capability. I hope this is kind of starting to fit together a little bit. Um, and then it can designate what happens with the next message, which means it can include state. Okay, so an actor can have state. So you have this, this little thing which runs, maybe in, its, in the implementation, it runs in its own thread, maybe. Um, although most actor implementations do not map actors to threads because you want a lot of actors and you don't necessarily want a lot of threads. You want end-to-end -end threading. All right? So um, you can, you, and this little actor can have its own address space, right? It can um, basically keep its own memory. It has a mailbox, right, where messages come in and they come in in a certain order, right? Interesting, sort of an interesting thing here. Yes? Is this similar to Windows design? I don't know enough about Windows interior well, other than Panama okay. Wait, what? <laughs> it's sending messages. Yeah. Oh, yeah, lots of things use message sending. Yeah, lots of things use message sending. Because, so, 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 you ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate message sending right now. Okay, ready? Hello. What does this look like? Actors resembles people. I can't force you to do anything. I mean, I could come and physically compel you, which would be, you know, in violation of our, 
by laws, it would probably be hurt. Um, right? Stubborn. Yeah, you are stubborn, you that. <laughs> right? But I can send you a message, and I can say, you know, please raise your right arm. Right? And you can, it's up to you to decide whether or not you're going to follow that message. So when people talk about actors composing, they compose much more like people, and the systems that we have in real life compose. Jay? So, so then would the capability dictate whether they do that action? Not necessarily. Based upon the message? Oh. Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. Although there is a, there is an actor language called Pony. There's there's a language called Pony where everything's an actor. I did not name it. I swear to God. Um, <laughs> called, called called Pony where um, the the data the data sharing the data sharing mechanisms are all based on capabilities. Oh. So you so it's 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 cool. We can, we can talk about it after. Uh, Rachel. Yeah. Yes. All right. What about the memory of her head? It sounds like there's a lot of setup and teardown for these that might even, you know, I'm guessing it's less than threading where you wouldn't use them as an alternative to threads, but it still sounds pretty heavy. So, we're going to get there. I'm going to tell you to hold that thought. I will tell you, I will, I, will, I will tease you with a little bit of an answer, which is that it's highly implementation dependent. I've seen it done very well, and I've seen it done really crap. Um, and, I, and I, by far, far and away, I have not seen all of the actor implementations that are out there, right? But I've seen it done nicely, and I've seen it done poorly, okay? So, so, so are we cool on this? By the way, I have sketch notes for this. Um, so if this, if this is something you want to keep a hold of, I'm happy to send you the picture of my notebook. Cool, yeah. Um, so actor communication, right? Um, messages are delivered at most once which is the holy grail, right? But this is theoretical computer science, so we can say it's whatever we want, um, right, at most once. You can get dead letter, but you should never get the same message twice. You can get duplicate messages if they're sent twice, right? But you should never do that. You have FIFO mailboxes. So conceptually, actors are reacting to a message, processing one at a time. So in reality, it's like a teeny, teeny, tiny little reactive system. We're gonna talk about reactive systems. A little bit. Yes? So mailbox managed on the way in, or by the sender or the receiver? The mailbox is managed by, I guess, God, right? Like, so, 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 so this, so this actor, so th first, first of all, let's be very clear. This actor has, actor zero has no control over actor one. Zero. Right. The only thing it can do is send messages. Right. Okay. So it has no control over its mailbox. Actor one has maybe a little bit less control over its mailbox, right? has a little bit more control over its mailbox because it can say, I'm going to ignore messages that come in based on my internal state. I'm it, going it can, to... It can get rid of duplicates. There aren't no duplicates. Are, so it, would need to, it would need to maintain state. One sec. It will need to maintain state, right? Just like I'm asking you to do, mm -hmm. maintain state, right? And basically say, when the next message comes in, I've already seen this message, right? I'm not going to respond to it. I'm just going to let it fall on the floor, okay? okay. Yes. Uh, I was just gonna make a comment, which is uh, if, you, if you want to, just think about this of like Internet of Things. This is a lot of the same concepts that are going on, except of having these actors that exist in software. You would actually have actors that exist in hardware. There's a whole subject of research called actor remoting, and many actor implementations have actor remoting or some variation of it, which lets you spawn an actor on a remote machine mm -hmm. and then communicate with it. Right. Um, it's. It's nice, right? Because you know, then you can have actors in memory, and then you can have actors on other machines, and it's, it's interesting. And then you have the issues of administrative domains, and you get into Luca Cardelli's land, uh, ambient calculus. It's, it's 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 an interesting discussion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, gets, um, it gets large fast. It gets it gets large fast. Well, so 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 Rachel's point is interesting, right? Because um, there's no such thing as a channel. So if you've ever used um, any language that models CSP, Tony Gore's CSP, uh, communicating sequential processes, like Anyone know? There's a real popular one. I mentioned it already. Real popular language. Two letters. Go. Go. Right. Go. Go routines and ch and channels and stuff like that are um, that's CSP. That's Tony Moore's CSP. They they have the notion of a channel. You instantiate a channel. You can pass a channel around. Um, there are no channels in the actor model, right? Because that would be overhead, right? So in the in the purest sense, in the most distilled, pure you know, sense of the actor model, there are no channels, because that would be another actor, right? The only entity, the fundamental unit of computation is, is an actor. So, um, actors and Scala. There's a great, uh, Scala, early versions of Scala had their own implementation of actors built into the, into the standard library. It was great. There was then another one that was built. Um, does anyone know what it's called? 
Akka, all right? So um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Akka. Akka is based, so the truth is, the dirty truth, is that Akka is based on um, Erlang's process architecture, which is actually the actor model without it meaning to be, right? So Akka is based very much on that supervisor trees. Actors can supervise other actors and respawn them if they fail under certain conditions. And it's interesting, very interesting, right? So um, Akka is sort of made of like three different pieces. Um, they're futures, right, which are, which are really, really great. So those are now in Scala.concurrent. So I don't even think that uh, Akka has futures, strictly speaking, anymore. I think it's just a pass-through package, um, something like that. There are actors, and then there are streams, OK? Was that a hand? Rachel, was that a hand? I'm, I'm just, I have, I'm, I'm just trying to fit, figure, is this the same Scala language that they had um, on the Amiga back in like 1991? No. Okay. No. <laughs> no, it's not. This is, this is coded. Okay. I didn't even know there was one on the Amiga, so we're going to have to talk about that later, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which would also make a cool talk. Just saying. You know. um, yeah, and then, and then there's a streams implementation, which is really great, um, and I, I will get there um, as well. So, so here's what um, the actor that I wrote, the CSV actor, looks like. So you have a class, right? Because um, that's that's what you do, right? And it extends actor. Um, I, I don't remember if actor is a class or a trait, or if, um, whether you're inheriting because Scala has traits, which is a great language feature. Um, so you have this method receive, right, um, that cases out the input, right? If it's a CSV line, then it grabs the line, and it does handle row synchronously line.split on that, right? And then, it'll, and then it kills itself, okay? Oh, um, me so, seeks. I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't hear it. Was, was it a me uh, oh, it's a me seeks. In other words, uh, it's a reference from uh, Rick and Morty. The oh, part sorry. That's no, no. okay. Right. I'm sure it was clever, though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's absurd. No, I'm sure it was. Well, I didn't mean that. It came out wrong. <laughs> Guys, people are not my specialty. Machines are my specialty. <laughs> so, so, so I basically say context stops self. So, so, so what is the implication here? It processes a line and dies. How many lines can it process? One. One. Okay, so how many do I need to spin up for n lines in my CSV? N. Yeah, yeah. n. Okay, great. All right? And if it receives anything else, then it stops itself. Okay? This code, did I, did I, did I do an okay job? I, I mean, I don't know how many of you have seen Scala before, so some of the constructs might look a little weird. Um, that's, that's allowed. Just be, just be lucky that Paul's not here right now. He'll, he critique it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, uh, so, so, Aka actors. Okay. The trouble with an actor per line, Rachel, coming on back, all right? The trouble with one actor per line is that there is a certain amount of overhead based on the implementation for spawning a single actor for every single one, okay? The reason for that is that you then, first thing you need to do is you need to spawn that actor. So for 500, sorry, sorry, for, for 5 million lines, that's five, 5 million actors, right? So you have got to go through the overhead of spawning those in addition to actually processing them. And then you got to go through the messaging, right? So, so it's two things, right? So I thought to myself, well, what if I just had a pool of actors and I managed the pool and I sent them and I'm like, son of a gun, this doesn't sound fun anymore, <laughs> right? Like that, that whatever. So um, the, the point is that the messaging overhead adds up. Sorry for the widow there, right? So the messaging overhead adds up, right? And I figured, what, what should I do? So Akka Streams is this reactive streams um, implementation, which lets you do some really cool stuff. So what I did was it actually will manage the actors for you and do all the fun stuff for you, OK? So, so let's, let's go through this. So we have the magic of top sheet. functional nightmare. I'm sorry? A functional nightmare. Well, yeah, you got a lot of, you got a lot of fun stuff here. Right? So um, actor system, CSV experiment. We're creating our actor system, right, so that we can address our actors, because every actor has an address. So actors, um, by the way, there's this great quote by E.O. Wilson about ants. Um, there is no one ant, right? Ants are, they come in multiples. And the corollary is Carl Hewitt, the inventor of the actor model. Actors, there is no one actor, they come in systems. Okay, so one actor sitting around is very, very boring. One ant sitting around is very, very boring. Get a whole mess of them together, now, you're, now you got a party, okay? So, so you have your actor system, you have the actor materializer. I, I still don't understand what that does. Um, but I tried taking it out and everything went to hell. <laughs> okay, so, so, the first, 
the first thing we're doing it's here. It's the stages of debugging. Right. <laughs> Re remove all code possible until breakage. Okay. okay. So we do file I.O. from file. We grab the file, right? The, it's from is defined up top somewhere, okay? Right? We then, frame and delimiter, we grab, um, we split it on new lines, okay? We then do map decode wait, string. Wait, 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 what's that number? What's that actual number there? I think that's max line length. Oh, okay. I think. <laughs> no shame. Okay, uh, right, so, so then we do a map. We decode string in UTF-8, okay, so we get it in there. We split it, right? We then turn the split there um, from a split to a list. So we're actually doing a little extra work, right? We're doing a little extra work because there's a little bit of type conversion going on here, okay? Mm -hmm. And we, we actually process it, we do the processing, right? Um, where we do the, now that it's split, we do the, the, the two traversals, right? And the join back. So when it comes out of this process here, it's ready to be written, okay? We intersperse with N, with new lines, all right? So we basically take each one and we separate them by a new line. We map them back to byte strings, okay? Which we can then uh, write to the file. Holy crap. Okay. So this looks a lot like, 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 like something that Walt would do in Perl with a fucking lot <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm having to say, I'm also, I'm also a Perl guy. You're a Perl guy. And, and, uh, and JP was too, and I think we're all sitting here going, I'm, I'm, I'm just not getting it yet. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm, I'm like maybe two, 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 three lines in on Perl. Yes. In theory, well, it's not running any faster, I see, but that bottom line. But No, no, that, that's the max it'll wait. Oh, okay. It so finishes what, much faster. What is happening in parallel here? Where, where is the parallel Aha. coming in? Yeah. Uh, you're still reading one line at a time. You're still, you're still, no, it's well, not. Well, is this, is this, this is all like parallel. A, yeah, it's like, is this basically setting up a, um, uh, what do you call it? So when you hit this, um, th I guess that those first two lines are setting up almost like a callback where you're saying just, it, this is more like an object thing where it's saying, I'm getting a file and um, I'm so opening I'm, the file, I'm reading it, but every right. time I read it, just take this action. Right, frame it via framing delimiter, right. this byte string, right, this byte string. Yeah, I, I think I'm having the same problem. I don't see where it's actually parallelizing. Unless, Mission accomplished! Oh, okay, good. Right? It's not supposed to look. It's supposed to be much easier to reason about, and it's supposed to magically do the parallel stuff behind the scenes. Uh -huh. So what this does okay. is this creates a whole mess of actors behind the scene that it materializes, I assume, don't know what it does, right? Um, it, that it materializes those actors, manages the pool, and then when it does a map, that's a parallel map. How do, okay, so how, and this is just throw my ignorance of do it. Scala. Um, how do you control this. Like you say, it creates a mess of... A whole mess of actors. Yeah, I'm, I'm, technical, I'm a systems guy. We don't like to create science. messes. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, right. it's Something about things going up. It's science term. You know, yeah. actors, you, you know, there's a, a kilo mess and a, you know, you'd have to mess. Anyway. <laughs> so, so, can, can yeah. because it sort of looks vaguely like this, can we think of this as being like a pipeline on the command line? It is a pipeline. So yeah. That's yeah. exactly so, what it is. So, the, so all the maps... Good. So the maps Love that. So the maps are running, the maps are, run, are running in parallel. parallel so, it right. be, so it's decoding and skipping some things to the next one, which can start splitting Correct. while it's still decoding. And that's, Correct. So the, all the processing for each line is happening. Correct. Well, what, I, I guess. But hold on, wait. There's, mm -hmm. there's one cool feature behind this, which is that it actually builds a flow graph in memory. This is like a DSL here, right? It builds a flow graph. I don't know if this one builds the flow graph or whether you have to explicitly do that, but theoretically what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to build a flow graph that it can then optimize and realize that you got um, three parallel maps cool. here in a row, maybe those can be, maybe those can be squishified, right? Yes? Does the JVM somehow know the architecture that it's running on so that it can act, use as much of the Avail a much available Absolutely. processing power as as as, as is there. Is, I mean, is, is that the way? Because because if if you're trying to do things that are parallel, you get two. And, and you get like two. If, if you're if you're trying to do four parallel threads and, and you only have uh, two processors or you only have two two right. Right. hardware threads on your on your system, then then you're wasting your time. Right. So right right right. You want to maximize that your parallelism to what. 
hardware resources you have. Correct. Okay. So and the VM is going to do uh, uh, JVM is going to do that for you. Not only is the JVM going to do that, the JVM knows the uh, processor uh, instruction language extensions that my CPU supports, and it will use those effectively. Uh, yes. But, but, but it's not. It's not as simple. It's not even as simple as that because. Go ahead. Yeah, because you know it might have to. You know, maybe there's a pause while it's waiting to read the next line. Yeah, it's just slowly doing some processing. Right? right. So absolutely. Right. So things could be happening, and if those things are all like JVM threads behind the scenes, mm -hmm. they could still be running in parallel. You, but you could still get more than a two times speed up if you only have two times uh, two threads. I mean, it depends. It depends on what is really going on in all these things. So the, the thing my brain is choking on is what happens if, let's say one of your lines, um, I don't know, has some sort of problem with it. How is, like any uh, error, can how are error conditions handled on this? That's My input data is perfect <laughs> because I made it that way. Yes, in your mind, I understand that. Right. For the rest of us. Yes. No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying that this is an experiment where I, I didn't build in any error handling because I knew for a fact mm -hmm. what the data, what the input data was going to look okay, like. Fair enough. Okay. So then question number two, how dynamic is this? If this is this understands its system, but if let's say there's something else running on the system, this level of parallelization that you're getting, is is that dynamic or if we have time, I'm gonna show you. Okay. Okay. Yes. But do you think I'm counting calories? Do you think I can count calories if you haven't thrown me, Ellie? Oh, right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, well, this is a this is the end trick question. Right. <laughs> it's like, this is this is how it ends. Yeah, it's a trick question. <laughs> right. 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 I was like, oh, shit. In, insert blank stare, right? <laughs> what? Parallel. Thank you, Rachel. I apologize. <laughs> Mia culpa. All right. Okay. So 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 then we take this pipeline that we construct, right? We're doing a run with, right? So it actually executes the pipeline, and then we're waiting a maximum of five minutes. Hmm. So there's a separate timer running. There. JVM is very thready, like very thready. I don't know if you ever watched it in action. People are always like, yeah, we're going to take the JVM and we're going to throw it into a Docker container and we're going to have massive scalability. And I'm like, it's already in a container it's called <laughs> the JVM. Also, it's really thready. Good luck, right? So it's kind of an interesting, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the next thing I tried, um, Scala has parallel collections, okay? Scala has parallel collections, which are, I believe, being removed from the language, which is a damn shame, because they're great, okay? So what this one is able to do is I'm able to, oh, whoops. Uh, are they still in a 2.12? I'm sorry? Are they still in a 2.12? I think 2.12 is the last time that they're in. But you know what? Let's, let's Google that, because I may be wrong. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. All right, so, so I'm basically grabbing the, uh, the source from the file. Um, I'm getting the lines, right? So, so at this point, it already is doing the, one of the traversals for me because it's going over each byte and splitting it on the, the new line, right? So it's doing that for me. And then I'm converting that to a list, which is a great Scala data structure. It's a linked list. It's as efficient as a list. Uh, and then I'm doing lines.par, which is cool, man, cool, all right? Lines.par. And that means that it's a parallel iterator. It's a parallel collection. So it takes that collection, that linked list, and it turns it into a special parallel collection. Yes. In uh, regular Java, there is a par four command that does the same thing. So cool. Or if it if it cool. comes on the same JVM call. I, I wonder. I wonder if it compiles to the same stuff. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah. Yeah. We should find that. We should figure that out. That would be very. Matlab has a par four also. Matlab. That's where it came from, actually. That's how I found out. They stole it from the JVM because, well, they moved MATLAB 6 onto, or MATLAB 7 onto the JVM from C++, and that's where the par 4 came from. <coughs> cool. Cool. So, yeah, so basically um, I'm doing a for each here, right? Um, not, I don't care about the result here. I'm just uh, handle row sync, and this prints it the standard out, and then I can pipe it to a, to a file. Okay. Right. So this is, this is pretty nice. And this is a little bit more tractable, isn't it? This is a little bit more tractable than that, yeah. <laughs> right? It's cool, it's a little more tractable. So I wonder, does the, I mean, I was, as I'm writing this, I'm like, before I did the benchmarks, I'm like, I wonder if the simplicity in code yields a, yields a performance increase. Does the simpler code, is it able to optimize? 
Who knows? We shall see. Mm -hmm. um, next, Rust. <coughs> okay, so I wanted to have an, a, a language which is compiled down to native. Okay. Um, how many of you have heard of Rust? Has anyone ever messed with it? A little bit. Ish. Yeah, ish. Okay, yeah, no, cool. Yeah, it's it's cool. interesting. So, yeah, it's a very cool language. So, um, as ahead of time, native code generation as a compiler um, that doesn't that compiles down to native. Um, it's managed memory, but not in the same way that the JVM has managed memory. Um, the JVM has garbage collection. This uses RAII resource acquisition is initialization, which is a pattern that is used in certain languages like C and C++, but this one is enforced by the compiler. So if you ha ever have a memory, um, if you ever have a crash due to memory, it's because it's a bug in the compiler, not because you wrote your code wrong. Unless you do unsafe stuff, which you shouldn't be doing, right? Um, so it, it's pretty interesting. Well, so it's not garbage collected. So basically, basically what happens is um, every time a reference, every time a binding, right, comes into scope, it memory gets allocated for that, and then when the binding goes out of scope, it gets deallocated. So it's constantly allocating and deallocating stuff. At, it's basically cleaning up as it goes along, right? So it's, just like it's New like, C++. I'm sorry. Just like New C++. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's. there's Is that true? There's, there's some new things in C++. There's. There's unique pointers and share pointers that are a lot like what, what Rust has. Yeah. Cool, that's, that's awesome. Well, well that's good, because any, anything that makes languages safer is better, right? Mm -hmm. So. I disagree, but okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've yep. seen a lot of crap software. Oh, okay, now that I agree with. Is that for free? Yeah. Um, it's functional and object-oriented, maybe. I, I should have put a yeah, question mark after that one. Yeah, that's I should have put a question mark after that one. That's because very it's got good. traits, it's got a little bit of, it doesn't have inheritance, but it's got composition, it's got traits, and it's got some cool stuff and abstracts and neat, neat stuff. So, um, yeah. Close enough. Yeah, so I'd say it's a close enough. So anyway, so here's the actual work done, right? So handle line, right, mm -hmm. line. We're splitting it on that. We're collecting it as a vector of string references. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're taking the elements, right? We're taking the line, we're splitting it, we're collecting it as a vector. We're then iterating over the vector, right? So we're turning it into an iterator. We're mapping each element, right? We're throwing an X on the front. We're mapping over it again. Remember that that's traversals two and three, right? Throwing an Why X on the butt. Do those separate? Yeah, that's yeah. I, I, I opted to do it separately so that I would add another traversal. I did it intentionally. You're doing it to, to, to go it, one to one. I did it for the sake of. I did it for the sake of doing it, and I did it consistently, everywhere except awk. Okay. okay, you with me? Yeah. I, I, this is the first time giving this talk. Had an advantage. What? Yeah, so it's why awk was better. There's more than one way to skin a cat, you pearl guys, right? <laughs> so yeah. We know that. So, so yeah. So so so. Yeah, we, it's know, still wrong. we then collected into a vector of like actual strings, not just string references. Um, I'm not going to get into the difference between and stir and string in Rust because it's pain in the butt. Um, and then I join it there. Okay. So um, let's call Rust the the baseline, the native code baseline. Even though we're kind of using awk as our baseline, right? So synchronous Rust um, goes pretty quickly. But the cool part is that it uses about 1.5 megs of memory, excluding the space that the binary, or sorry, including the space that the binary takes, okay? So, and this is constant. So it processed a gigabyte CSV file and used 1.5 gigabytes of memory and did it in that. Oh, sure, because it really doesn't need more than one line's worth of memory. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And it's being read off an SSD, because I'm not, I'm getting there. It's, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, oh, sure, is the correct, yeah. Exactly. How, much, how much RAM did, did Scala use? A lot. <laughs> is that why you didn't put it? <laughs> well, no, because if we have time, I'm going to fire up Visual VM and I'm going to show you the JVM as it runs through the stuff with Scala. Okay. If, we have time, that. if we have time. So, so I'll hurry up. Okay, then concurrent Rust, I use the job stealing. I'm going to hurry because if you guys are interested in the demo, then Take I'm going to Take your time, sure don't worry. We can stay here a little extra. All right. So, so, so con concurrent Rust used more CPU time and finished it in, un in under 50 seconds, which is pretty cool. This one, however, used a lot. Of memory, that and I used sense. n threads for n cores. In this case, my this one, this guy's a quad core machine. Okay, used the job stealing scheduler, so uh, used a lot more memory, and we had a thread pool that we built up, and it did all the fun stuff. Okay, memory is free. I'm sorry. Memory is free. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe where you live. Yeah, I say not in this Maybe where you live. All right. So okay. So so I can do the demo. I can do the demo. I'm good. Do you want to skip the Rust one? It's just me running a command. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, skip that. All right. So so let's do that. And then we can do the different uh, scholar strategies. Except I'm not going to do the actor one because I couldn't get the actor one to work right to behave consistently before I came. 
um, but I didn't have a chance to sew them. That's cool. Da, 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 da. Okay, Visual VM, really cool tool. Okay, uh, Visual VM, and I'm going to keep that open while I, I'm going to throw this guy here. We're going to throw the Mac Activity Monitor there. Okay, and we are going to, where am I? All right, so we're going to do... Ready? Steady? Go. Okay. So this should show up. Great. Now we can go to monitor, monitor tab, and we can watch this. Okay, this is gonna be synchronous now. Alright? Now hopefully you won't I won't embarrass myself and nothing will A crash. Uh, and B, uh, my computer won't the fan won't drown out my speaking. Um, which would be equally embarrassing. Okay? No, I mean, no flames, so I think No flames so far so good. Yeah. yeah. So far so good. <laughs> All right. The magic smoke is still inside. Okay, so interesting. Heat views, heat size, CPU usage. Notice the GC activity is pretty low. Right? You don't get that. Uh, how many of you have ever seen the sawtooth uh, oh, yeah. garbage collection mm -hmm. pattern? Get ready. You'll see it soon enough. Right? No sawtooth here, really. Right? Um, and the, the heat size, the, the you know, used heap, it's, uh, it's about where you'd expect it. Um, you know, it spun up some threads at the beginning. There's notice the number of live threads and the number of demon threads. I told you the JVM was thready, didn't I? Didn't yeah. To see all those demon threads, right? Uh, kind of, kind of crazy. Okay. One minute, twelve seconds, and you can see Java is running up there. There's one process. Where's my? You can see Java is at the top of the list with 100 and, uh, 101. Point nine. <laughs> Using 315.5 megabytes. Okay, so that's that's compared to 1.8 gigabytes of concurrent rust with the job stealing schedule. That's crazy, right? That's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And, and and you can see around here, so far, it's pretty consistent, right? Mm -hmm. I'm actually I'm actually impressed. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here to my new. Close that guy. We're going to watch this guy run with parallel collections now. All right, and we're going to see if there's a little bit of a difference. Holy crap, the memory utilization is already up 3 gigs. Because huh? it had to load everything into memory at once. Mm -hmm. And how much RAM is there available in the system? I believe 16 gigabytes. Whoa. I have a slide. It's, okay. it's a pretty crunchy machine. Right? No, 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 I'm not doubting that. It's just that that's just a memory hog compared to, let's say, rust or concurrency. Well, but, yeah, I mean, it's so nice, right? By the way, there was a, there was a time, I don't remember, there, I know exactly when it was, actually. I lied. Okay, when rust introduced the um, intermediate byte, byte code layer for the optimization engine, um, I, chopped two, I chopped 10 seconds off the execution time. It used to be two minutes flat, and now it's 150 or 149 or something. Oh, wow. Right. Now we're going back here to Aka Streams. Monitor. Oh, there's the fan. All right. Watch, 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 watch. I'm waiting for the first GC activity. Yeah, because your memory usage dropped at first. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still pretty low. Yeah, it's not as low. So the Aka streams by managing all this by managing all the bookkeeping for me, right? I get to use that cool DSL to build that that computation flow, right? By by I build the stream, right? Um, that it actually it actually does okay. And if you look up here, it says 746, 732. So it's around uh, seven and a quarter, right? Let's say it's around seven and a quarter. Why is your heap size steadily falling? I don't know. Um, is that just the JIT doing it doing? That that wouldn't be the JIT, because that's the JIT if it's for for instructions, not for memory usage. Oh, right. Okay. Think about it. But it's an interesting. It's an still it's an interesting question, right? Rachel's sort of asking. Right. Okay. Let's see. Let's One minute, twenty-five 
five seconds. Many more threads, right? It's using many more threads than I have cores. I, I Many. Can see what the count is. Also. 30. It's, 30 it's using about 30 uh, live threads and about 8 to 10 daemon threads. JVM has a lot of internal bookkeeping. It does a lot of stuff. It also has G1 um, is a partitioning garbage collector, so you know all bets are off at that point, right? Yeah. So you said you have a quad core? Quad core. All right, and there's our there's our time. So let's move this guy a little over. See, real user sys, real user sys. All right, so I'm going to come back here. All right, cool, right? Uh, that, that Visual VM, by the way, that, that ships with most JDK installations. And if you don't want it, you can. If you don't want to install the whole JDK, because why would you want to install the whole JDK unless you need it? Um, especially if you're doing Scala development, you don't even need the Java. Um, awesome. You can uh, you can just download the Visual VM from from GitHub. They have a, a bleeding bleeding edge release, um, which is very featureful and quite stable. I haven't had a crash once yet. So, oh. yeah. cool, right? It's, it's interesting, right? It sort of makes you think. It makes you wonder about other things. So, so here's sort of the results, right? You have synchronous Rust, concurrent Rust, synchronous Scala, Aka streams, and Scala parallel collections. So. By wall clock time, concurrent Rust, Scala parallel collections, right? Synchronous Rust, synchronous Scala, which is, these two are roughly on par, one and two. Yeah. And then you have Aka Streams, which, sorry, buddy. <laughs> right? You know, I was kind of hoping for, for a little bit better out of the Aka Streams part. All right, so uh, Walt suggested in his infinite wisdom that I add uh, some, some charts, because everybody likes charts. So this is, uh, this is wall clock time, so you can see Rust concurrent, Rust synchronous, Scala parallel collections, and Scala synchronous. This is wall clock time, and then uh, CPU times. I made this with R, by the way. Um, I, it's not a, I, I committed all the code to my GitHub okay. um, thing, so if you want to download it, and pull request welcome. Like if you want to add, you want to add like your language of choice, like Python or Perl, do it. See, do, sure, fine, write it. <laughs> Right? I mean, better you than me. No, I'm serious. I've done this actually in C. It well, actually, no, I'm saying, it'd actually be very interesting to see this in C and in C with OpenMP or OpenACC. Uh, mm -hmm. No, because OpenMP, no, and uh, that really won't help you out that much. And there's something I'm kind of curious about cause, okay. and that I'm seeing with this, which wait, is... Wait, wait, wait. Why would it help you out? Because that would paralyze it against the cores. Right, but you're shipping memory around that kind of stuff, and the computate like the computational intensity of this isn't really where you're going to get yeah. a lot of. Yeah, this is a hard thing to parallelize because you really have to parallelize by lines, or you have to do that pipeline thing. Yeah, and the problem is, is that it's or, not. And that's not the way it works. Well, that's right because that's right. It all splits loops, right? But well, yeah. you can do more. So the the biggest. Together and, yeah. Basically, it's you have to package up. Ship it off to the CPU or, or the GPU. Have the GPU do whatever it needs to. No, no, no. That's not. Back. No, that's not the purpose of it. OpenMP split walls right. It, it right, doesn't yeah, parallelize yeah, because of loops. You can, I guess, do it by lines. Like, that's what right. I was yeah. thinking, but, but then it's hard to put them back together. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's just, it's not working. It doesn't line itself there because you're you're forcing yourself to write the code. Again. Right. So, but one, of the, but what I was trying okay. to get at though is, um, I do want to see how fast Perl. Oh, no, 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 we'll, we'll do it. Hey, hey, you said this is the first run. I figured this is going to hit the talk circuit here, so. Um, See, I got a lot of canned content. Yeah. Um, but I, I can do one on a formal modeling with Alloy, actually. I can do a workshop. Ooh, that would be interesting. Um, but, I guess, but one of the things I'm wondering, though, is if the JVM happens to have some additional overhead um, that Rust does not. Yes, that's correct. It has yeah. tons of overhead because there is no runtime with Rust. Right. There is zero runtime. Right. It's it's like C. There is no runtime versus Go. There is a, it ships a, it ships a kernel with it. Yeah. Right? I mean, Hello World is like two point something megabytes, but it's a fixed cost. You pay it once. Yeah. So that so your conclusions essentially were what you would thought. You would expect. I'm assuming you were expecting Rust to be the fastest. I was expecting Rust to be the fastest, except for this problem that I ran into. <laughs> Which is the, well, right, right. But we talked about there's no traversal in yeah, Gawk. Yeah. There's no. This would be the trivial solution. So right, we, we so, kind of throw that out. Yeah. But 
So so yeah. so so Glock did this. But yeah. but it, what was interesting to me was that concurrent Rust. You know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So either I paid in memory for that 1.8 gigabytes of memory used, mm -hmm. right, or I paid in CPU time. And my goal was to get fast by the wall clock and by the mm -hmm. CPU clock. Is, this, is that with process.awk? Is that? Are you looking at my? Yeah. So there's two awk scripts. There's process.awk and there's generate awk. Oh, that's generate awk. That, that Ruby. Thing right. right. Yeah. The the Ruby script generates the awk. Oh, right, and the aux is, right, the aux is, is hardwired a hundred things, it's cheating. Exactly. It's not fair, it's not a fair test. Exactly, it's not a fair test. That's why I said it's for, for fun. Very beginning. I like fun, I'm a fun guy. <laughs> you keep using that word. Right? You have to cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that word means it's what it means. Right? So, 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 so here are my test systems, very funny. So here are my test system specs. Right. Uh, so I had a quad core 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i7 because um, I know I'm, I'm out of time here. Um, 16 gigabytes of, uh, of RAM and a 250 gig uh, SSD. It's, it was pretty quick. So I tried to I tried to make I/O the least of the bottleneck possible. Um, and one of the and so further work I'd like to do this in Elixir, um, which runs on the Erlang VM because it would be very very interesting to see this. Um, I really want to get this running. Um, in Elixir because it's massively parallel, right? It's what Akka is based off of. So I'd be curious to see if we can get this to work. Um, but then you have the issue of if you're going to spin up a process per line, right, an actor per line, then spawning and messaging, you're now introducing lots of overhead like Rachel was able to intuit early on. Yes? So really dumb question. Uh, what if you had something like RabbitMQ yeah. where you sat there totally. and you yeah. took everyone and then you just had the consumers or how many threads yeah. you had and then just... Right. So I could dump them onto. I couldn't. Use, I don't even have to use RabbitMQ. I could use NSQ. I could use Kafka. I could use Redis. I could use. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw the blog post about Redis streams that are coming out. Check it out. Google it. It's cool. Uh, it's really hot. Because um, you've already got Redis lying around. So like, just okay. Anyway. Um, so so yeah. So that's one way you could do it. You should before you follow through on that particular one. You too. Read the cost paper. Okay. And see how it influences your thinking. Just gonna, make sense. just gonna put that out there, right? Because it like blew my mind. And then the next thing I like to do is I really like this to package up the experiment to run in the cloud on an unbiased VM, right? Like, because because you know there's no such thing as noisy neighbor syndrome, right? This is the perfect world. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to you know I'd like to like have Terraform and Docker to be able to spit this onto you know a, uh, a, a have each one run in its own isolated Docker container on a many core system that I spin up, pay for only for an hour, and then spin down. That's like you know twenty bucks. Right. Um, as opposed to, because they have some, fa I was using DigitalOcean with Terraform. Has anyone messed around with Terraform? I've heard some amazing things about it. Not about uh, it, it got me excited. It really did. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I loved about it was that the, the, the DigitalOcean um, integration is just as good as the AWS integration. So I was able to go find the DigitalOcean droplet size that was nice and beefy, spin it up, tear it down, and stuff. So now I just need the ability to provision um, this. So, so I would love to have each one run in a Docker container and isolated with a quota. Right, like you can really get a, a, you can really draw a box sort of around the, the parameters of the experiment. That's, as opposed to just waiting until my battery's at 100% and keep it plugged in, right? So, which is very unsound. Okay, this concludes my talk. Love you.